Hello again. Um, today again, I'm going to be making video on something that someone wants me to do. Say actually, okay. And first of all, I really want to apologize that this has taken some time to come back to you. I've been very very busy. Anyway, I've been asked by someone to talk about, you know, to talk us through on the accreditation process you have been involved in. Yes, I'm going to, I've actually been through a lot of accreditation process in NHS hospital. So I'm going to be sharing my experience and most times it's a general thing, okay, for everyone. But let me give you a background. So today we are going to actually be looking at the accreditation process, okay, in NHS, in the laboratory hospital here, that is NHS hospital. And when we talk about accreditation process, what we're looking at is UCAS accreditation process. But before I continue, I want to give you a little background. Because sometimes people model these things up. So before the lab will start, okay, this laboratory will be giving a recommendation. Okay, there will be a recommendation. The UCAS will say, you know, to meet our standard, to meet ISO laboratory standard, you need to do this, this. They will give them the list of what they need to do. So once that is done then, of course, so the UCAS will come and check it and they are happy with everything, they can give the person license. They can give the laboratory or the hospital license to practice, okay? But what happened, in order to ensure that there is consistency and in order to ensure that, that, that there's a maintenance of standard, then UCAS will continue to visit that very laboratory, okay? Now, they are visiting the laboratory to make sure that the laboratory have, has, has not deviated from the original, you know, uh, the boxes that they've ticked. Okay, good. So once that is done, then they will visit the laboratory to make sure they are still maintaining standard. And what areas are they looking at? So before I answer this question, I want to just give you an idea. What areas are they looking at? They are not just looking at area of test you are doing. It's one part of it. Okay, because remember when we talk about a lab. Laboratory, what is laboratory is made up of, laboratory is not just test. Okay, there's a lot, even though we are known as diagnostic, like testing sample and all that, is is there's a lot that is done in the laboratory. Don't forget that in laboratory there's pre-analytical and of course there's analytical. Anyway, so in the laboratory, there's management aspect. There is conformance aspect, okay? You know, when we talk about non-conformance and conformance. And that conformance is what the UCAS is coming to check. And the part of the conformance is for you to show them how have you been maintaining conformance. In other words, you need to show them, have you been doing quality control? Where, where is the evidence that you've been doing quality control? Have you been training your staffs? Where is the evidence that you've been training your staffs? Okay? And what is your staff qualifications, okay? And where is the evidence? So they want to see all this evidence. It's not because you said it that they're going to take it. So accreditation involves a lot of things. And most of the things that they want, that will involve, will require the department or the management to provide evidence, okay? But what happened is this. There are, it's not everybody that, that is actually concerned. Most times when it comes to providing evidence, it's mostly the managers or the senior member of staffs. But like maybe um, the people who are working on the bench, okay, they are going to tell you what to do. Your manager will tell you what to do. So before the accreditation, there's always a lot of meetings that goes on in the laboratory. So a lot of things are put in place to make sure that the people's competency is up to date, okay? To make sure that um, people's um, training, like I've said, is up to date. To make sure that they have all the people's credentials, you know, um, the people that have been, you know, all kinds of things. The quality control charts, you know, the liver journey, everything that has been printed in previous months, everything is kept and filed in order, okay? The one that has specially portfolio, or whatever, they go to put all those things in order because these are what they are going to be looking at, okay? Remember that in this accreditation, it's not just the laboratory, so they also have to accredit both the laboratory specimen reception, okay? And then they will go through each of the department, whether it's hematology, transfusion, biochemistry, immunology, they will go through each one of them. And in some cases, they go, each one of them, they will divide the days that they will be going through each one of them. They may say they are going to do hematology today, they will do transfusion tomorrow, they will, they will just share it like that. So, what, which area are you likely to be involved during accreditation? Now, the manager might come and tell you and say, Mr. A or Mrs. A, they, when during the UCAS accreditation, I want you to talk them through this, this, 
this, this. Remember, you have been, you have been, your competency has been signed. It shows that you are competent in doing that particular test or in doing that particular, you know, uh, analysis as the case may be. Let's use example like full block count. Okay. So in full block count, remember it can be any example. So it doesn't have to be full block count, guys. So in full block count, so maybe your, your manager or your senior member of staff may say, Mr. A or Mrs. A, you are, when the UCAS come, you are going to talk them through full block count result. What we do here. You see it now. So that is where you are likely to be involved. But before they will say that, they make sure that your competency in authorizing or validating that full block count result is up to date. That's what they will make sure. that, And you have your trainings, your competencies, everything is done. Then they will talk you through. Now, when the UCAS come, they will first of all go and meet the managers. They will discuss a lot of things about the paperwork, like I've mentioned, ask questions and all that. They may show them around as well. Okay. So what then happened is that when it is your turn, they will say, okay, um, um, maybe this is Mr. A or this is Mr. B. He is going to be he or she is going to be talking to you about full block count result. Okay. Then that very you cast member of staff will then stay with you and you can then talk the person through on what you are doing. Okay. Or how you guys work here. So you'll be talking the person through on how you guys are going to be working. So you'll be going through results. The person will be, will be watching. Remember that that person is experienced BMS possibly as well. So the person will be watching. Okay. And see what you are doing. Then you'll be explaining. I've checked this. I've checked this. So I'm going to release the result. Or I've checked this. I've checked this. I'm not going to release the result. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. If it is so, you give them the deep because the part of the accreditation is checking your SOP. So you give them the detail of what is in the SOP because they want to make sure that everything you are explaining is consistent in what is in the standard operating procedure. Okay, so now there may be also another member of staff that will say, okay, if the UCAS come, I want you to be the one that will show them around. They may say, Mrs. A or Mrs. B, okay, please, can you show this person around? Then that person will just show the UCAS member of staff around and say, okay, this is our specimen reception, this is our desk, this is, and the person will just talk to you. So everybody do different things. So to come back to what you have asked me, because I've said a lot now, so you can actually pick anyone you like, okay? So remember that there's a lot of tests we do. Maybe we do something like ESR. You can be asked to show them how we do ESR, how we do the quality control, how we validate it, how we even do the maintenance. They, you can be you can be asked show them how we um, validate our quality control. You can be asked to say anything. Okay, you can be asked to show them how we look at how we do our blood film report. You can be asked to show them how we do our blood group and antibody screening. You can be asked to show them how you do our class hours. You can all kinds of thing. Okay, you can be asked to show them how do you do your liver function, whatever. How do you do maintenance? So it is up to you then to pick what is particularly specific to you. When that opportunity is given to you, and it's not up to you to talk the person through. Okay, so I'm going to just tell you, you know, how it goes. I'm going to pick one example. And this example that I'm going to pick can be applied in any area, whether it is show them how you are going to do ESR, show them how you are doing, how, how we are doing full block count, show them how we authorize our quality control, show them whatever thing that you, you can. So don't just pick what I'm trying to say. It can be applied in everything. So you can use any kind of an example that you want. Okay. So let me just speak something like maybe that is very generic for every one of us. Okay. So I'm going to just speak something like uh, maybe ESR. Okay. So let's say I've been asked to show them how we do ESR. So when the person come, and of course, I'm going to introduce myself to the person and say, my name is this, that, that. Okay. So this is the equipment that we use to do um, um, ESR. Okay. So what we do with this equipment, this is how we do the maintenance. This is how we check the reagent. This is how we do this. This is how we um, uh, authorize the quality control sample. You know, after we've done the maintenance, we'll do the quality. And this is what we check. See the graph. See the days we validate. See the files. See where we find the result. If we want to print it out, if it is the one that is electronic, you should them from the screen so see our previous result now so what happened that the sample will pass this way you can also mention the principle of the analyzer if you want it will pass and the analyzer will aspirate the blood and of course 
after half an hour or one hour, depending on the ones that you use, you know, it will read the result. And this is what we do. Now, you can also tell the person that, okay, sometimes we can have baby ESR where there's no much sample from that baby. This is, so you might need to do it manually. Then you can talk the person through on how to do the manual ESR as well. So all you are doing basically is to tell the person what you are doing, what your SOP said in line with what you are doing. So what are you going to do then? The person, after you finish talking, the person can ask you question and say okay when this happened what do you do when that happened what do you do why is the person asking you question the person is asking you question because he wants to know he or she wants to know are you going to operate according to the standard operating procedure or do you have your own just idea about it and the person will be asking them some of those questions okay and in most cases sometimes they've gone they've kind of had a little look before they start asking you some of those questions now let me also use another example let's say something like Claire Howard's, okay which I'd already mentioned in my previous video. So let's say they've asked you talk us through about Claire Howard. Let's say your manager have said, if they come, you are going to talk them through about Claire Howard. Then what you do is to talk them through about Claire Howard. So you just say, okay, when it, we do Claire Howard based on this, 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 that, that, okay? So um, when it is this, it is that. You just talk them through all of that. Then at the end, they will ask you a question. Now, for the interview purposes, how do you answer this question? They've asked you, Talk us through to on the accreditation process you have been through. What you need to then do is to give them these stories, like I've said, and pick one part. Just say something like, anyway, I've been to a number of accreditation, or maybe I've been to one accreditation, as the case may be. Just pick, if you say, if it is more than one, say, just say whatever thing that is best suits you. But I'm going to just make it generic. So I've been to accreditation process, and during that process, before the, the way we actually started before the process was that, you know, there was meetings, okay, uh, within the laboratory, you know, making sure that everyone knows what they're supposed to do. You you know, there was a lot of paperwork making sure that we are confirmants, okay? So competency training was up to date, um, SOP was up to date. Anyway, during the process, after all of that, okay, and uh, I was told that I'm going to talk them through on maybe full block count, okay? So what I did, of course, because I'm going to be talking them through on full block count, what I did, in addition to the fact that my competency have been signed, to make sure that I'm also used to every aspect of that very full block count. So what happened that during the day I was supposed to talk them through, the, the person, the, the UCA staff was introduced to me, and then, of course, and I started, the person sat beside me, then I started going through the full block count result with the person. So the person, I was telling the person, this is how I validate this result. And this is why I did it. This result, I validate it because of this or that. And after after I finished explaining, that you cast member of staff then asked me some few questions. And generally, it was very interesting because he or she gave a good recommendation about me, saying that I demonstrated knowledge, I demonstrated that I know what I'm doing. And that is the experience that I had. And of course, we passed the accreditation, or you can say you guys fell it, depending on what that, you know work for you so that is just what you need to tell them and that is a process that is actually what happened of course during accreditation so yeah here you go during accreditation you are going to be told what to do what you are going to talk them through it's not up to you to then talk them through and in talking them through make sure that everything you are saying is according to standard operating procedure yeah here you go thank you very much again and of course i hope i've answered the question and if you think i should say more Put it in the comment section and i'm happy to say that thank you so much for bringing that question and yeah keep putting your question and when i have time i'm definitely gonna answer it for you thank you till i come back away again bye